So welcome back to Natural Language Processing. Uh, we're going to continue with a very short segment on dialogue systems. Uh, so dialogue systems are a very important component of computer science and natural language processing because uh, they're very popular these days. So you have, uh, uh, for example, a person interacting with a computer and asking questions and getting answers. So I'm going to show you first an example of a video that you can watch yourselves on YouTube. The link is shown here. It's a famous uh, skit from more than 50 years ago by Abbott and Costello. Uh, they are having a serious misunderstanding uh, when they discuss the names of baseball players. So the name of the skit is Who's On First? And the uh, funny uh, thing about the skit is that the name of one of the players is Who. So when one of the uh, participants in the conversation says something like Who's On First? Uh, he's not really asking a question, he's actually making a statement as saying that uh, who is the name of the person on first base. And the second person doesn't understand this and asks some funny follow-up questions and so on. And it turns out that the name of the uh, second baseman is uh, what and the third baseman is I don't know. So you can imagine how funny this dialogue can get. So I encourage you to watch it by yourselves. So as you see, dialogue has some interesting properties. Uh, the very least is that it involves more than one person. So therefore, whenever somebody asks a question, they're usually expecting an answer. And if one of the uh, participants in the dialogue makes a pause, that means that it may be time for the other person to start talking again. So this idea is called turn taking. So two people or more than two people take turns. There are some specific rules for turn taking. So for example, people are not expected to interrupt others unless there's a good reason or unless a lot of time has elapsed. So there is an idea of a default turn taking rule, which says more or less that you say what you want to say and then you give a chance to the other participant to say whatever they want to say and so on. So this is the default and there are many exceptions to it. So the only places where uh, it is possible to uh, have a change of turns is uh, when you're at a relevant place, for example, after pause or after a question. Barge in is possible and it has to be analyzed uh, separately. Another interesting property of dialogue systems is something called conversational implicature. So in implicature, we have some shared uh, information between the participants in the dialogue. So here's an example. If a says, how can I help you? And then B says, I'm looking for a Thai restaurant. So this is a typical example of dialogue. So what is clear is that the first person is willing to help. The second person is looking for a specific restaurant. And then they probably know in what neighborhood they're located. So the first person is not going to send a second person to a Thai restaurant in a different location or to a Mexican restaurant. So well, this is part of their shared uh, in, in information. So implicature is the term that refers to meaningful inferences that the listener can make. So we're going to see some examples of this later. So Grice's maxims refer to some properties of dialogue that make it easier to understand and more logical. So here are some of them. So the first one is the so-called maxim of quantity. So the idea is that you want to make your contribution to the dialogue informative. You don't want to say either too much or too little. Second one is the maxim of quality. So you want to say only things that you believe are true and don't say things that for which you lack evidence. The third one is the maximum of relevance. The fourth one is maximum of manner, so you want to avoid ambiguities in the discourse. So dialogue is a collaborative endeavor, and it is expected that all participants are going to make an effort to uh, make it possible for the other party to understand what is going on. So here is a, a NACLO problem on uh, Grice's maxims. Uh, I'm going to show it to you very briefly and then I'm going to pause so that you can try to solve it on your own. So the problem is about uh, a robot that teaches uh, players how to play a card game. Uh, the robot's uh, name is GGG and it has uh, to follow the following maxims on Grice's list. Relevance, manner, quantity and quality. And the idea is that it uh, gives you hints as to which cards to play. So please read this carefully and try to solve this problem. And the goal here is to understand the following things. If the robot gives you some particular piece of advice, you have to determine whether uh, that sentence violates any of the maxims. And if yes, which one? So this is the first part of the question. And then there's two additional components. And then on the next slide, I'm going to show you the answer. 
So the final thing that I want to mention about uh, discourse uh, dialogue analysis is speech acts. So speech acts are some specific expressions that are not just factual statements. So for example, assertives, things like suggesting, putting forward, swearing, boasting, and concluding. Directives, things like asking, ordering, requesting, inviting, advising, and begging. Commissives, that includes promising, planning, vowing, betting, and opposing. Expressives, for example, thanking, apologizing, welcoming, and deploring. And finally, declarations, things like I resign or you're fired. So if I say I resign, I'm not just saying that I resign, I'm also taking an action. And if I say you're fired, as a result of the sentence, the second person has lost their job. So some action has taken place even though it's just a sentence. To conclude this segment, I'm going to go over the typical uh, architecture of a dialogue system. Uh, so it involves typically the following components, some understanding component, which uh, uh, makes sense of the sentences asked by the human. Then a dialogue manager, which based on what it has heard uh, from the user, continues to carry on the dialogue by asking follow-up questions. Uh, I should also say that there, are, there exists so-called uh, mixed uh, initiative uh, dialogue systems where uh, the system may be the one who interacts uh, with the user first. Then there is a task manager. So based on the dialogue manager, the system may decide, for example, to uh, send a query to a database of, let's say, airplane reservations or uh, some search engine. So the output of the task manager is then sent back to the dialogue manager, which generates an answer to the user. And then this uh, can go in a loop if necessary. For example, uh, the generation may involve some follow-up questions. And then uh, there may be some additional rounds of understanding and dialogue management and generation until the task has been completed. And one other interesting property of discourse that I didn't mention before is the idea of prosody. So prosody is a property of text that uh, deals with issues like rhythm and intonation and stress. Uh, so there has been a lot of work in the speech literature and the natural language literature uh, on identifying uh, this kind of prosodic uh, expressions and the uh, features in, in documents, especially spoken documents. Uh, those are important because a lot of uh, text, especially in uh, user-generated content and social media, is used to express emotions and emphasis and so on. So it's very important for a good natural language understanding system to be fluent in uh, people's use of prosody. So here's an example of one specific instance of uh, prosody called emphasis. I'm going to show you one sentence and then I'm going to propose seven different ways to pronounce it and you will see that each of those ways to pronounce it will have a very different meaning. Uh, so here's the sentence. I never said she stole my money. And the task that you have right now in front of you is to say the sentence seven times and each time you should emphasize one of the words in the sentence in order. So first time you say you emphasize I, then never, and so on. And try to see uh, how much the meaning of the sentence changes because of this emphasis. So clearly, uh, this is something that you can only, uh, that the computer can only understand in the case of spoken text. If you just have it in text, you would never be able to uh, recognize the emphasis. Uh, although it is completely possible that if somebody wanted to convey the same idea in uh, written text, they could use something like italics or boldface or stars around words to indicate which word they're emphasizing. So there's a lot of interesting work that has been done and that can still be done uh, in the NLP community on uh, prosody recognition. And also, I should mention prosody generation. If you want to produce more effective, uh, more effective text, you would want to use uh, automatic prosody generation. So this concludes the segment on dialogue and uh, I'm going to see you in the next segment.